Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. I have been explaining the modern periodic table to you. Moving ahead with it, I just explained in the previous video that when the 3D orbitals fill up in scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper and zinc, after the 10 electrons have filled up the 3D orbitals, the next electron moves on to the 4P orbital. The next element with that, where the 4p orbital is being filled up would then be gallium. Gallium has 31 electrons and what is the electronic configuration? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10 and 4p1. So this one electron goes to the p orbital and therefore gallium comes under the p uh, block of the periodic table. Now after gallium, the next 5 electrons also go to the 4p orbital. So you have these 6 elements that is gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine and krypton. All of these are going into the, into the 4p orbitals. After the 4p orbital is filled up, the next electron goes to the 5s orbital. So the next electron would go in the 5s, therefore it would belong to the fifth period because this, the period is the principal quantum number. So the fifth period s orbital would be here. One, uh, that uh, one electron in the s orbital is the first group. So it would be rubidium. Rubidium would have one electron in the s, 5s orbital and strontium would have two electrons in the in the uh, 5s orbital. Now, after 5s is filled up, the next electron, if you see, does not go, goes up and goes to 4d. So now the 10d has five orbitals. So the five, uh, the next 10 electrons would go to 4d, and these next 10 electrons are. Why zirconium niobium? Remember the. Um, the d block elements here the it is not the 4d which is being filled up after 4s it is the 3d which fills up so you could say the d block elements uh, the principal quantum number they do not lie in the same group as the principal quantum number they lie in uh, in one group after that principal the actual principal quantum number they belong to so here after 4s it is 3d which is being filled up and here after 5s 5s it is 4d which is being filled up so 4d fills up and the 10 electrons go to 4d till cadmium and after cadmium the next electron goes to 5p and that is indium so p has three orbitals therefore the six electrons would go here one two three four five six and at xenon, the 5p orbitals have been filled up. Now, the next two electrons should go to 6s. So, after xenon, you have cesium and barium. Alright? So, once the 6s is being filled up, we find the next electron goes to 4f. And f has 7 orbitals and it has a capacity of 14 electrons. So, Logically, just as we had the d orbitals in between, we should have 14 f orbitals here now. There should be a gap of 14 orbitals. Now, that would make the periodic table, it already is called the long form, it would make it so much longer that it would be difficult to accommodate these 14 elements and to write the periodic table that is so, you know, uncomfortably long. So what was the solution that was found? That instead of make, writing these 14 elements here and making this wider by 14 elements, let us put these 14, the f block, there are only 4 f orbitals which are being 4 f and 5 f. That is, there are only two of them which, are, which have to be filled in the presently known elements. So what did scientists do? What did he do? He took f, 4 f and 5 f, these, these f block elements or elements in which the f orbitals are being filled up. The 14 elements were put here under uh, separately and these were called the f block elements. 
and the element here which should have belonged to the uh, third group that is after cesium barium the element having atomic number 57 should belong to the third group and it should have one electron after 6s these electrons should go to 4f so these electrons 14 elements would it starts with lanthanum and it ends with luthenium so these elements lassi pernad pump some eugentive dio atom ye blue the it actually makes 15 because then the last element should come here and then hoffmannium and the d orbitals keep filling up so the next 14 elements would go to the 4f and after 4f it is the 5d which is being filled up here and after 5d gets completely filled the next electron moves to 6p therefore these six elements are the ones where 6p they belong to the six shell and the p orbitals are being filled up and after 6p fills up it is then the 7s which fills up so after 6p the next element is francium which has one electron in the s 7s orbital radium has two electrons in the 7s orbital and after 7s it is now 5f which fills up so 5f we have this series of 14 elements and this is known the first series here is known as the lanthanoid series because lanthanum is the first element and here actinium is the first element therefore the second series of f orbitals being filled up is known as the actinoid series the lanthanoid and the actinoid series because of lanthanum and actinium so lanthanoid and now the actinoid series will be filled up where the 5f orbitals fill up after 5f it is 6d so laurentium rf db sgbh borium hs mt ds rg and c and these next 10 electrons would go in 6d after 60 the 7p six electrons would go to 7p and these are the six elements with one electron in p two electron three four five six and that's it after the filling up of 7p 118 elements are completed we do not know of more elements so this is how the entire layout of the periodic table was actually made on the basis of electronic configuration of elements and Mosley did not ignore the work of Mendeleev. Mendeleev, he was given honor by scientists for the extraordinary genius that he showed and the work he did towards periodic classification, so much so that the element 101 was named after him. It was called Mendeleevium and the symbol was MD in the actinoid series. So he was honored after the new uh, periodic table was given he was honored for his work by naming an element after him so this is the basic layout of the modern periodic table and now we'll study about these different blocks of elements that is the s block the p block the d block and the f block so now you've understood these blocks are nothing but the s orbitals being filled up p orbitals of that particular shell being filled up and d orbitals and the f orbitals and therefore the the entire periodic table has been made according to the uh, the electronic configuration of the elements interesting isn't it thank you for watching if you found the video useful please like it and subscribe to my channel and recommend it to your friends please return for more videos in chemistry bye bye